program to perform the peak identification and perform the peak fitting can be found on the W drive. So the W drive and then the MSCI then Material Science 355 MSCI 355 account and then in the CASA XPS folder CASA XPS folder again and then the program is called casaxps.exe. So if we double click on that and then run it program opens up and now if we open a file in this case we'll just use some sample data in that same MSCI 355 folder and let me shrink this down a little bit here alright so the data looks like that and then if we look at the groups, we can see the different regions that were selected using the XPS. And so as I double click down here, we're seeing the different regions. Some are narrow scans, some are wide scans. Alright, so if we look at something like this and then we want to do the peak identification, key thing here is to click on the actual uh, specter itself. And if we click that, then what happens is some of these uh, menu items up here get highlighted. And then if we select library, for example, I'm just going to move this a little bit out of the way here. Then it comes up with the element table. You can also choose periodic table. If you have a filed input um, or a mass to look up in particular, if we just stay with the periodic table, for example, and then if we pick the find peaks, what happens is then the program will actually go through and find all the peaks or what it thinks are the peaks, and then it will try to identify those. And so in this case, um, some uh, peaks here, the things are tantalum, uh, fluorine peak here, oxygen peak, uh, some other um, tantalum peaks. And so it gives you sort of an idea of what it thinks is there, uh, but it also will give you some things that in this case may, may or may not be peaks depending on, on your data. You can select various elements. Um, so the ones that it finds already are selected over here in the periodic table. If, for example, you thought there was, should have been some nickel there, you can select that. It will then put where the nickel should be, and then you can verify whether you actually do have the nickel peaks or not. Or if you have something you know that's you don't think is there, um, you can select that. If you didn't think there was titanium there, you can deselect that, and that takes that off. So in this case, it's a very easy way to identify the peaks. There is a little bit more work that you have to go through to verify that they really are peaks and that everything is labeled correctly. Okay, again, just a review on how to uh, identify peaks. So if we load the data like was shown previously, we can go through. If we select, for example, this last group here, uh, we can see the peaks. And then if we want to identify the peaks, we click on the spectra or the uh, spectrum here and then select library. And in this case, I'll just leave the element table up. And then if I do the find peaks, it automatically goes through and finds the different peaks here. Uh, we can change the labels on on the graph here uh, and doing that all we have to do is go up here and select the, the pencil icon here and then and let me again just move this over so it's out of the way if we do the peak labels um, it basically has all of the different peaks it has found um, in the peak identification process here and so for example if we want to label the carbon 1s uh, at 284 electron volts we select that and then we can either have it written vertically or horizontal so this will have it if the checkbox here is checked then it'll do a vertical I'm going to do it horizontal here we can change the font size to anything we want uh, also we can change the, the font style so let me just uh, make it a little bit bigger here we're going to choose uh, 14 for the font size okay and then when I hit apply what happens then is it actually labels the peak instead of having to use uh, the labels up here it will label it as the carbon 1s and so for the peaks that you're sure of and you know um, where they're located we can uh, go through and do that so another prominent peak here is the fluorine KLL so if we look for the look for that at about 608 select that and keep the font the same and then we apply and that gets labeled. 
and so in that case then you can uh, it makes it a little cleaner a little bit easier to see uh, the labels on the graph all right so let me close this out and then if I do a clear all elements then it gets rid of all of those other labels but you could go through here and label each of these peaks and it makes it a little better a little easier to read than all of the different lines that were there on the uh, program itself